Public Exposure, we are very fortunate to have Howard Bono with us. He is of the Financial Revival Group. The website up on the screen, myfinancialrevival.com. What Howard is here talking with us about is our financial recovery, especially in light of the mortgage foreclosure crisis. And Howard, this whole segment is about one thing. And so we're going to put it to you. Okay. You got one year and one year only to fix this economic mess. What do you do? Well, I have two ideas, but let's go to the one that I, I really like the most, and I think that we might have missed the window for this. But um, housing has pulled us out of many major crises in the past because of the fact that it generates jobs, it generates income, and more importantly, it generates that feeling of prosperity for individuals, and then we take that feeling and we go out and we spend money. So if, if it were within my power, here's what I would do. I would refinance every house in America with a mortgage on it. I would refinance it at between two and three percent. I would have the federal government subsidize for a five-year period the difference between that two percent mortgage and the four percent that that you could get a mortgage for today. I would refinance those without regard for income or jobs or any of that stuff because we're going to have huge amounts of of defaults coming anyway. We're not going to get rid of those. The goal is, though, if, if most people had a house payment that was, was at 2% interest, mm -hmm. regardless of what they'd have to do, their house payment would be low enough that they're saying, I'm staying. I'm staying put. I'm going to make my payments, and I'm going to stay put. What that's also going to do is, for a lot of people, it's going to put a little extra money in their pocket. They're going to go buy appliances. They're going to buy new carpeting. They're going to start to work on their houses again and put money back in the, in the hands of those people at, uh, at the, home, the home stores, right? Yeah. They're, going to, they're going to do that. It's okay to say Home Depot. Okay. We all know that Home Depot, Lowe's, and right. True Value. Right. Those are the ones that come to mind. I'm an ace guy myself. Oh, ace, I like ace the hardware, I like yeah, the ace hardware in, in Arlington. So, um, so anyway, people are going to be spending more money. And, and since we are a consumer-driven society, yeah. that's going to put more money into the situation. The other thing that this does, though, that is so, so critical is the problem that we have now is the banks have this huge problem because they transferred all of these loans incorrectly. I'm not going to say illegally. They transferred them incorrectly. No, of course it was legal so, because of the MERS system, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what they're, and they're having a hard time verifying that they really have the right to that, to foreclose or to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take all that away because we're going to recreate all of that. Then the mortgage pools that they sold all these loans into, that S&P and the other rating mm -hmm. agencies rated incorrectly, we could go back and we could actually rate these new mortgage pools correctly. Wall Street will buy them if they are rated correctly, if they know that, hey, this has a much higher opportunity for default, much more likelihood for default, so we need to be able to make more money on that because there's going to be more risk. Right now, Wall Street and, and, and actually pension funds all over the world that have invested in these don't really know what they have. They think they bought mortgage-backed securities. Really, they just bought paper because there's really not any mortgages that are backing those. So you could rebuild all of those pools. So now you've got Wall Street investing in something that they really understand what they have. You have the American consumer that is uh, uh, now has a little bit of extra money and is saying, I don't care if my house is upside you down. You know, forgive me, Howard, but... I'm not hearing Paulson or Geithner have ever said anything like this. You didn't come from Goldman Sachs, did you? No. No, I, I certainly didn't. They probably wouldn't take me. <laughs> you they, came they, from the mortgage uh, business, I right? came from the mortgage business. I'm a working guy. I, I go to work every day. And um, what I'm looking at is just common sense solutions. The reason that this didn't happen is because we as individual homeowners don't vote as a block. We don't make huge campaign contributions as a block. Goldman Sachs does. Bank of America does. Citibank does. All of those groups that got these bailouts, they gave the bailout money to the people that, that the politicians can influence. They gave our money away. They gave our money. They need to give that money back in the hands of the individual consumer. And if they do that, the rest of this works itself out. Why, why would a bank not say, hey, this is a great idea? because they would, they'd get cash flowing again. 
uh, I don't know why they wouldn't say it was a great idea. They, uh, but I doubt that they would like it because they're going to make fees on every one of these refinances. You know, all of these people in the real estate business, and you could even extend that to say if you buy a house during this time period, which would probably take more than a year, but if you buy a house during this time period, you're going to get the same deal. 2% interest rate, the government's going to subsidize for the next five years. Um, so would the banks like that? Probably, because they could make fees back on mortgages that they really knew what they had. Mm -hmm. And right now, they're able to borrow money from the Fed at 0% interest. So they're going to make money. Exactly. Wow. Who wouldn't want a guarantee like that? Uh, you, you, don't even, you don't have to sit in, in a room anywhere and come up with a strategy as to how we're going to make money. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. Uh, it seems to make sense to me. I floated this idea three or four years ago. I talked to, you know, our local and, and our elected officials here in the area. And basically, uh, I'm a nobody. They didn't really give it any, any kind of serious consideration at all. I think, it, I think it's a plan that would work because it solves many, many issues. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've always been an advocate for the working guy, working America. And, mm -hmm. and I've talked to people about this and because and, people that we coach all the time that are upside down in their houses. And I said, if your house payment was, you know, where would it have to be for you not to worry about whether your house is upside down? Well, if my house payment was here, I wouldn't care because I like my house, I like my neighborhood, and I could afford that house payment even if I wasn't back to making as much money as I used to make. So I just stay put. So they could solve the problem in one fell swoop. They could have done it with the first stimulus program because I did some rough calculations and it's about a s between five and seven hundred billion dollars is what it would cost total for the program over a five year period. Hmm. And wow. um, but it takes the, the we've talked before about the power in Washington lies in the tax code. It takes the power out of Washington, puts it into the hands of the people, and you have to trust the people that then are going to be able to move forward and um, uh, do something with it. I have one more thing that I'd like to throw in on that. you got to be quick. You could even go one step further and to tell people you could defer your first six payments on your house if you did one of two things. If you put it in a bank account that you didn't touch for a year, or if you used that money to pay off credit card debt. Wow. Makes too much sense. Strongly encourage you to go to MyFinancialRevival.com. You can learn an awful lot from that site. And right here on Public Exposure, we're going to continue to investigate the mortgage foreclosure crisis. And we'll see you next time right here on Public Exposure. Take care.